What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones. And I'm excited for today's guest because we have the pleasure of welcoming a dynamic guest whose talents stretch across multiple fields. Justin Stuckey is a Samford University alum and a recent MBA graduate from Auburn University. A former student athlete, Justin is a three-time NCAA All-American who has mastered the art of time management and leadership both on and off the track. Now he's, now, now he's taking those same principles and applying them to a thriving career in media. As the host of the podcast, Stuck In My Thoughts, Justin has carved out a space for himself in the world of sports media. He's reported for the NBA Summer League, Bleacher Report, and TNT Sports, showcasing his versatility and dedication to his craft. An on-air talent, podcast host, and social media influencer, Justin is effectively building his brand in marketing, communication, and media. He's driven, passionate, and dedicated to making every space he enters better. Join us as we dive into his journey, his experience as a former athlete, and his insight on navigating the fast-paced world of sports media and marketing. My guy, Justin, welcome to Beyond the Ball, brother. How you doing? Appreciate you having me on, man. Dog, that was a, that was a fire intro. Yeah, man. Shout, shout out to producer Britt for, for the intro, man. Shout, shout out to producer Britt. She working. She be working, man. She be working. Putting in the work, man. Teamwork makes a dream work. That's it, man. That, that's, that's the name of the game. Man, let's go ahead and dive in. Let, let's, let's go ahead and dive in. And I, I, I want to talk with you a little bit about uh, your transition from academia to you really getting into, you know, this whole realm of, you know, like growing up, bro, like, like you know, like getting a job job. Anyway, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let, 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 yeah, man, let, let's go ahead and dive in. So, how how has your recent academic background influenced your approach to on air sports media, and what you've been, and what have you been most surprised about transitioning from the classroom to working with major networks like ESPN and TNT Sports? I think for me, it's funny because my academic side was not involved in sports media at all like i'm not a sports um broadcasting or journalism major i was marketing undergrad and then i went and got my mba like you mentioned in the intro um but i i was doing all these things kind of while i was still in school the most recent one was the summer league and so that didn't happen until after i'd already graduated but being connected with people at um, espn and being able to shadow game days and whether football or basketball or being involved with people at SEC Nation and things like that, that happened all while I was in school. And even the Final Four back in April um, when I worked with TNT, that happened while I was in school. So I, I definitely feel like I took advantage of the opportunity I had and the spaces I was in. Like Auburn, they're bringing in all those types of people, you know, to these big games that they have. So I just reached out, you know, closed mouths don't eat. So that's what I did there. And then um, got blessed with the opportunity with TNT, went through interview process and got an opportunity to be a part of the pregame with the Final Four and then part of the national championship. So I definitely say I took advantage of the time I had while in school. And then when school ended for me um, back in May, I'd say that everything just kind of I just utilized what I had and kind of picked up off of that momentum at the time. For sure, man. For sure. Talk a little bit more about that game day experience. Cause I know you walked. I know you worked alongside of Reese Davis and Pat McAvee, and you know some of those other guys. Like, what was that? What was that experience like? And what was that energy like being there in person? You know, college game day. Crazy. Now, I ain't gonna lie. It was. It was crazy. Um, for me, Reese Davis has definitely been a mentor in the space. He's been a um, great influence. A guy, um, Christian man. He's from Alabama, like myself. So. Um, those connections definitely, um, we hit it off early. I met him February of 2023 and I didn't reach out to him again until, man, this was October, November. So like seven months later and I reached out to him, saw they were coming to Alabama for game day. I emailed him. He responded to my email during the break of the playoff reveal. So immediately I was already shocked. I was like, dang, like he took the time to respond to me like while he's on air. And so he told me I could come down. We went down to uh, Tuscaloosa and I stayed with a friend. Shout out to my boy Tiger. Uh, stayed with a friend that Friday night, that Saturday morning, I got there like 6.30 a.m. And uh, yeah, I had a great time. Everybody was so welcoming, cool. And me and Reese's 
relationship has grown ever since that point. But um, that was definitely a great experience just to learn and meet people and soak it all in. You don't get those opportunities every day. So I was very appreciative of those. For sure, man. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an awesome story. That's awesome to hear. So understanding that you've pursued both sports media and marketing, how do you balance the creative demands of being an on-air talent with the strategic thinking required in, spart- in sports marketing? And how do these two worlds inform one another? Can you repeat that? Because I got a notification. I hate to, I don't want to miss any part of the question. So sorry. For sure, for sure. You've pursued both sports, sports media and marketing. How do you mm-hmm. balance the creative demands of being an on-air talent with the strategic thinking required in sports marketing? And how do these two worlds inform one another? I honestly feel like it makes it easier for me having the perspective that I have and understand I literally just came from a uh, I had a meeting and the lady in the meeting said you have to think about what the consumer wants rather than what you want um, and what drives that. So I feel like with my marketing background, I have the, the mindset and the awareness to understand what drives demand, what people want to see. And then I incorporate that with my own values and kind of mix that into the sports broadcasting career. So for me, I want to be very unique. I don't want to be a carbon copy of somebody else. You hear a lot of times, oh, he's going to be the next so-and-so. I don't want to be the next so-and-so. I want to be the first me. So that's kind of how I want to tailor it. Like even with my podcast, I watch, I don't know how many episodes of former interviews that the guest I have coming on has done. And I try to ask way different questions because If you're just going to hear the same questions, you could have just watched the episode or a podcast interview they already did. So for me, I feel like, honestly, I feel like for me, I have the advantage. I feel like it makes it easier for me about my thinking because a lot of people, they know what their skill set is, but they don't think about the people that they're going to be in front of, the people that is going to be watching them. So I try to make it in a way where I'm not compromising any of my values, but I know what's going to trend or what people are going to want to tune into. For sure, man. For sure. Yeah. So just keeping, you know, ultimately keeping your hand on the pulse. And and then just like you said, when you lean into your own uniqueness and you lead into the benefits that you have of just being authentic to yourself, that that positions you really well. So I like that. Definitely. Yeah, man. Yeah, I like that. So so th- thinking about um, just the pressures in sports media, right, th- this can be intense, especially when we talk about covering like live streams for networks like NBA, like just like you talked about a little earlier with, with Summer League or even Bleacher Report, how do you manage the stress and how do you prepare for unpredictability to ultimately ensure that you consistently deliver under high stakes conditions? I think you have to understand that not everything is going to be perfect. I feel like as an athlete, I already had that mindset and understanding like your game plan, your preparation, everything's not going to go as planned that doesn't mean it still can't be successful. So that's how I looked at it. With TNT, when I was at the Final Four, my first interview, everything that could have possibly went wrong, went wrong. Like my IFB wasn't working, so I couldn't hear my producer. I kept hearing the guys on the on the stage talking about random stuff. I heard a commercial in my ear. And then like when you have the IFBs in, it's supposed to block out the noise. Mm. The the basketball team started coming on the court, so all the fans started going crazy, right? So I'm talking to uh, TJ Warren at the time of my first interview. I'm talking to TJ Warren. I can barely hear his responses. And when you're a good broadcaster, good reporter, you don't really go on script all the time. Sometimes you have to, you know, just bounce off the responses they give. So I'm like, Lord, I hope he's not saying anything that I should have, uh, you know, commented on or whatever. So I kind of went through that segment. And it went well. It was just funny. Like, everybody was giving rave reviews. But I'm like, man, you guys have no idea. Uh, so that's just one example. With the Bleach Report thing, um, it wasn't on air. But I knew I had to, you know, be crispy with what I did. So just just made sure I had fun with it. I think that's the biggest thing. I'm, I'm making long-winded answers. But that's the biggest thing to have fun with it. Um, at the Summer League, my very first day on air, I was so nervous. Like, I was letting the nerves get to me, and you could tell at the beginning. But once I started just being like, you know what, bump this, I'm about to have fun. Like, at the end of the day, I'm just talking. Like, I'm just talking about sports, interviewing people. Like, it's not that hard. So those next two days, I crushed it all. Like, I felt way more confident. I didn't worry about 
messing up because when you worry about failing, you're going to fail mm -hmm. and failure is going to happen. So you just need to, you know, limit them as much as you can and focus on your strengths. Don't worry about the weaknesses and just have fun with it. Once I started having fun, everything went from there. I had to remind myself, like I was brought here for a reason. Like they selected me here for a reason. God opened this door for a reason. Let me just be me. Just do what I did to get here. And you're usually going to have um, success when you do that. There it is, man. There it is. I love to hear that you found your stride. And everybody out there who's watching and who's listening, we found our stride and we're going to return just in a moment with more Beyond the Ball. Attention, all my entrepreneurs, all my business owners in the DFW area, Triple D. All right, look, this is just for you. I want to help you as we're getting ready to roll out something new. This is going to be our local business spotlight. All right, because I know you might be out there struggling, just trying to get more eyes on your brand and trying to get more eyes on your business and trying to get more people to spend their coin with you. You know what I'm saying, because you know the struggle. So I just need this from you. I need you to, first of all, you need to tap in on Instagram at Speak Your Success Media. You want to follow the page to make sure that you see some of these other businesses that are getting rolled out and that are getting spotlighted because you might be able to benefit from them as well. The second thing I need from you, I need you to fill out the form just down below. And on that form, what we have for you is you just give us a little bit of information about your business so we know how to spotlight you, how to promote you, how to talk about the high points about what you do best in your business. And lastly, you need to follow the podcast. Just type in Speak Your Success Media on Apple, on Spotify, or even on YouTube, right? This way, you can begin to hear the entrepreneurial insights that I'm sharing every single week. It's free game, all right? Every single week. So tap in on the podcast and make sure that you fill out that form just down below. And I look forward to mentioning your business in the local spotlight. All right. Welcome back, family. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue to dive in with uh, Mr. Justin Stuckey as he's been, you know, been, been giving us a lot of game, giving us some insight on some behind the scenes stories. Hey, we, we, love, we love to hear those, Justin. We love to hear those, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. So now I, I want to I wanna talk a little bit about social media. And because, you know, ever since we've been connected, I've, I've been seeing your growth on social media. I've, I've seen like how you have a unique way of, of sharing your perspective, sharing your point of view. And I, I can actually appreciate your content, Justin. I, I can really appreciate it. Uh, so with, with social media playing an increasingly crucial role within sports journalism and with, with marketing, how do you strategically use platforms like Twitter, Instagram to build your credibility as an on-air talent and engage with your sports audience? I think Twitter, X, whatever they want to call it nowadays, has been more of a... Um, Focal point for me now, I started realizing how many people in that space use it. So when I was at the Summer League, I definitely started using it more. Um, Twitter has never been, or X, you know what I'm talking about. That has never been my like forte all the time. I usually get on there just to watch funny videos or get my sports info. But that's definitely a driving demand. Everybody knows nowadays social media is a driving force. That's where you get the quick hitter information. People don't watch full games as much as they do, um, much as they used to. They just want to get the highlights. You see a Bleach Report, um, House of Highlights, and you got all your information you need to know. So for me, I try to engage more now, especially on the Twitter X side of things. Instagram, I just try to think about stuff that um, I enjoy. I try to be very transparent on Instagram because social media is fake a lot of times. Like People only want to show you the, the glitz and the glamour. Um, I just try to give it from perspective and try to give people and let allow people to see some of the stuff that I'm seeing. Like, you talked about game day and things earlier. Very few people are ever going to get that experience. So I like to show people like this is what it looks like, you know. Um, so I just feel like that helps engage fans, followers, whatever you want to call them, just to be able to see. I know for me, when I was growing up, that's the reason I, I used to do my vlogs a lot. Like you can go to my YouTube and see a lot of my time at um, Sanford. And I think I had one Auburn track meet on there. Um, giving people a behind the scenes looks of what it's like to be a college athlete competing in track and field at a high level. Um, people enjoy that stuff because a lot of times people can't be a part of it. So they want to see, or they're expecting to be a part of it down the road. That's, I feel like is the biggest thing I try to show with that audience, the ones who have those dreams and aspirations that I once had and kind of showing them a glimpse of what it's like. You're not going to be able to get as much um, information other than from the source. And I feel like I was a source of that information 
and let me just use and capture the stuff I'm doing anyway. And then aside from that, it's good memories for myself to look back on. So that's kind of how I um, approach it all with social media. For sure. Yeah. And I mean, one, one thing I really appreciate about your content was when you were doing courtside with Stuck and when you were doing mm -hmm. Saturdays with Stuck. And I was like, wait, what? You talking to Charles Barkley? And, and I, I saw one one time you're talking to Charles Barkley. I saw a couple of weeks later you were talking to Frank Thomas. And then it got mm -hmm. to the point for me. Right. Because I've never been to an Auburn game. But it got to the point to where as I'm following your journey, I was just curious of who, who was going to be the next guest that you were talking with. And then it got to the point to where I was like, man, well, how did he even come up with this concept? So talk, talk a little bit about that, Justin. Like, how did you come up with that concept or wh where did where did you know, like where did this idea just just pop from? You know, what's funny. This whole day has been about Saturdays was stuck. I was just love meeting about it. But so Saturdays was stuck came into the picture right after I tore my knee, actually. So for those that don't know, I was, John mentioned early, three-time All-American high jumper, um, had a injury, I tore my patella, and so I was down for a while. And while I'm down, I was playing Fortnite and brainstorming ideas. And I knew I wanted to get really heavy into the social media broadcasting space, whatever you want to call it. And so I originally pitched the idea to some people at Auburn. I was like, hey, I want to get involved like, let's use this idea to help me get involved and help you guys create traction. They, whoever, I don't know if these people are even around anymore. They weren't going for it. They were just like, ah, you know, give me the run around. So I was like, you know what? Okay, I'm just going to do it myself. What was funny was, before the first game, I almost sat on the idea. Like, I almost didn't do it because, not that I was discouraged, but my idea is I was going to have cameras and people, you know, capturing it, doing it for me. And so I was like, you know, let me just bring my, my little handheld mics just in case. And so me and my roommate went to the game. I was like, bro, will you just video on my phone? So I just did it. And it got like 80,000 views. And after that, I remember uh, them reaching out in the marketing department and was like, uh, hey, you know, if you want to keep doing those, you know, you collaborate with us, da, da, da. And I was like, oh, now they want to uh, get on it. And so I, I made a point to let them know, OK, like, you know, this is my thing. I just want you guys to know, um, like, I appreciate, you know, everything. But this is all my idea. That's why I got my name in it. Like, Saturdays with Stuck is me. And so I just kept doing them. And I thought people enjoyed them, all the stories they were getting. Like, you mentioned the interviews I was getting out of them. And so I was like, ah, I've been doing them in Auburn. Let me test it outside of Auburn. So I went to the Colorado game. And I actually have, oh, where is it at? This is, this is some exclusive content. For all you uh, ballers out there, hope I don't. Hold on one moment, I got it. Where is it at? Where is it at? I see the thing. Oh, hold on, ballers, I got it. Okay, here it is. Put this down right here. This is the the access pass. I don't know if it shows right there to the Colorado Stanford game. Mm. So I went to I went to that game. Right, shout out to my my good friend Malika who. Got me in, got me tickets or whatever. So at this point, I had nobody <laughs> to film like that was with me. And so I still wanted to do it. So when I would introduce myself to people, I'd ask if it was like a second person. I was like, well, you video this while I interview and just kept going like that. I got a chance to meet Emmett Smith, um, Anthony Anderson. I interviewed Deion Sanders' daughter and I didn't even realize it until afterwards. Um, but it was just a great environment. I got that pass to where I was able to be on the on the field. So that gave me more access. Like I got a video Deion Sanders incorporate all that environment. You know, Colorado was way up at the time. And so um, that's how everything happened there. And that video went 50K views without any collabs, just pure my post. And I was like, okay, it's still doing great traction. People are still interested in this concept. I just kept doing everything that was with stuck so courtside was stuck saturdays was stuck soccer was stuck i started doing a bunch of stuff because i was like people enjoy this it's helping build my own content and i'm showing viewers the audience a different side of auburn these athletes the environments and showing people what they need to go try to do and experience themselves man man yeah 
Oh wait, wait, wait. I can't I can't leave this part out. I can't leave this talk part to me. out. Talk to, talk to the me. reason the reason that I started Saturdays was stuck, and I just said this to um these people in the meeting was whether you're on whether you have tickets on the 50 yard line in the nosebleeds or you can't afford a ticket to the game everybody can look forward to saturdays with stuck and getting that experience because when i was growing up i couldn't necessarily afford to go to every single college game like that but outside the stadium being a part in that environment that's what i wanted to be so somebody can be able to experience and say they had a good time or they had a memorable moment even if they couldn't get into the game hmm. I like that, man. I like that. Wow. Thanks for sharing that with us, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, no problem. That, that, yeah, that, that's awesome. Because I mean, j j just like with, with you sharing, being in that, um, be being in the position, because even, you know, for some students, you know, it, it might even be difficult for some students to be able to get in the games. Uh, and, and now now with you being a professional, I want to I want to take a slight pivot. And I want to ask you, life after life after grad school, we, we know can be like a like a major shift. And just like you talked about mm -hmm. earlier, you just graduating, you know, in May, especially when when balancing your, your budding career as a sports media professional. How have you been able to manage the transition from being a student to taking on a professional role with you as a podcast host, as well as on air talent? It's not easy. Sometimes it's smooth sailing and sometimes like in the position I'm in now is a transition kind of kind of difficult because I went from straight done in like May or so I went straight into doing a bunch of stuff like I went to ESPN's headquarters um, with Laura Rutledge I had her on my podcast I went to Nashville to work an event for on three um, I think I went to some weddings um, then I got this NBA summer league so I didn't didn't really stop and full transparency I was hoping to get a, another opportunity with them. They just got a market marketing deal, not marketing deal, TV rights deal with the Mountain West for football. And so throw my name in the head. I want to get in there, you know, um, but I, I wasn't a part of that package. So that just shows me how to continue to work. You know, you get something to where you get in a crazy high position with, with NBA TV, Summer League, and there's people who have been working for years that haven't gotten that chance. And so it's just something to where it's, humbling, but also a, a driving motivator to tell myself, okay, I got to keep going, got to keep working. And what can I do now to stay proactive to where um, there's no other choice? Like the demand is to get me into a part of their network or get into that building. And so I just have to stay with that mindset, understanding. I had a friend tell me yesterday, like, um, not, just stay humble, but in a way of like keeping the mindset, like you haven't earned it. Like you... People don't owe you anything. You have to keep working and to make it to where there's no question about um, your services and your talent. So for me, it's been it's been like it's always going to be a blessing anytime I get to wake up. But I have to continue to work, continue to drive and motivate myself. So whether that's pumping out this Saturdays was stuck that I've got great plans for that's going to drop here soon. Um, revamping the podcast, I have plans to do that. Um, you see, like Cam Newton, like. His fourth and one, he started. He didn't work for a network, but his his platform is booming now. You know, him and uh, Omari, who you just had on, Boogie mm -hmm. and Peggy, they be doing their thing. They were just at a Fanatics Fest. So understanding, like, I have all the tools that I need right now to build a platform and continue to grow. Um, so that's kind of where my mindset is now to make it to where all those people who never texted me back are going to wish they texted me back. Or the people who originally said no may have a yes down the road. So that's how I'm gonna look at it, for sure. Okay, so you say you plan, you're looking at revamping, re re revamping, stuck in my thoughts. What what is, what does that look like? What can we be expecting? Uh, you know, like how how are things gonna be shifted up? I think ever since the Reese Davis episode, it's had a really high potential, and so revamping it in a way to where you may have more, you may have more co-hosts showing up on uh, stuck in my thoughts. You may have. Uh, more segments to where it's not interviews it's talking mm -hmm. about different topics so just mm -hmm. revamping in a way um this is currently the branded logo here but it, it may change you never know you know stuck in my thoughts has been a hit it's been something i did throughout all of college now i'm no longer green college i have to look at it as a business i've always gonna I've always had fun with it always going to have fun with it but there's a, a lot of potential there, but I don't want to have untapped potential. I want to lock in and uh, build this thing up. 
I'm with that, man. I'm with that. All right. So you talked about you, you talked about Saturdays with Stuck and you talked about the podcast. So w- just keep, just staying in that same frame of reference with balancing multiple projects like na- now. Now you've graduated and now you're managing your career around that on air talent, podcasting and marketing. How do, how do you prioritize and balance like all the various projects and, and what systems or routines help you stay organized to be able to lock in and really focus? When you're a college athlete, and I feel like every college athlete, especially the ones that have transitioned out can speak to this. When you go from having your schedule planned out hour by hour, day by day, weeks and months in advance, and then you have all the free time, no schedule is very difficult. Like for me, I've been telling my friends lately, I have to find my routine. Every year I would go into college, it'd be like, around two weeks. I was like, I got to find my routine. Once I hit that routine, I knew what I was doing from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep. Yeah. Now for me, it's about staying disciplined. I tell people all the time, especially when I was an athlete, you're not always going to be motivated, motivated. So don't say, ah, oh, I'm going to, this is going to motivate me to do this. Forget that. You need to be disciplined because when you're disciplined, even when you don't feel like doing something, you know, you're going to have to do it. So you just do it to get better. Um, mm-hmm. I saw a quote the other day, um, he was like, if you don't do it today, it'll make it easy, but it'll, it'll make tomorrow harder. But if you do it today, it'll be harder, but it'll make tomorrow easier. And so that's kind of the frame of mind I think about. And I am big on now, like, don't sit on ideas. Like, even when Saturdays was stuck, that was an idea I was about to sit on. But I just told myself, just bring the microphones with you. Mm. And then I just did it. And last year, it accumulated almost a million in views. So I was like, dang, that, you know, did well. So I want to continue to drive that and build that. But definitely creating a routine is is crucial. And it's difficult. Like me and my friend talked about it in one of my previous Stuck in My Thoughts podcast episodes. Like the transitioning out of college athletics is not easy. I don't care how many speakers come in to talk to you, how many programs they talk about. Like <laughs> you're going to have to face that yourself. Like yeah. you're only going to get that experience when you face it. And I tell people like, I feel like I was really prepared as well, but you're still going to have that wake up moment and be like, dang, like I'm not going to practice today or I'm not going to the weight room today. Like class, like this is the first time in 19 years I've never gone to class. Like that's weird to me. Like I was already, I'm going back home after this, going back to Birmingham. I was like, Oh, I got to be back uh, before Monday. Like, dang, (laughs) Do I really have to be back before Monday? Cause I don't have class. And so, uh, it's just kind of weird. You know, I definitely got a longer time than most people because of COVID, redshirting, math. So six years in college, a lot of the people that I graduated undergrad with, they're going on their third year out. So they're used to this. So I'm just trying to figure it out now. Um, Lord willing, I can continue to elevate in this sports media space because like, man, going out to Vegas, that summer league was turned. And I was like, dang, this is a job. And so, like, it's kind of hard to remember. So for me, it's definitely about uh, finding that routine and making sure I stay disciplined. Like, I've been writing out a bunch of ideas that I have and do, just doing them. Even if you don't, like, we talked um, the other day, uh, just doing the ideas, no matter if you have, like, the perfect setup you want right now, building it and going. And I have to remind myself, that's how Stuck in My Thoughts started. I didn't have everything. I just went with what I had and grew. And so... I think that's the biggest thing for me. And I got to I got to start waking up earlier, too, man, and going to sleep at a better hour. I'm just being honest. I feel like but a lot, I tell my friend this the other day, man, when I am up, I'm a night owl. My best ideas happen 1 a.m., 1 30 a.m., hmm. brainstorming. And I'm like, dang, I need to go in with this. But I do need to start making a better routine and stay disciplined. So for all you maybe athletes watching this or no matter what level once that ball stops like this is beyond the ball whenever it stops you know what i'm saying uh you have to be ready and so if y'all got any advice or need some advice holla at your boy but i definitely think it's something that you have to think about like i have so many friends that even they were super successful in the nil space they're trying to figure out a transition now like what's next for me like i was the hot topic College athletic and I, I got a, I got a hundred and thirty thousand followers, but them one hundred and thirty thousand followers ain't helping me with a check. Mm. You know, they're not helping me uh, navigate 
you know, these everyday life things. So you have to keep that in perspective. So I think out of all this that I've said, being disciplined is the most important thing when it comes to reaching those dreams or pushing towards those dreams. Man, I love it. I love it. And just like Justin said, when the ball stops, when the ball stops, you got to have a plan. But we're not stopping here just yet. We're taking a quick pause. We're going to be right back just to hear more about Justin's future plans and what the ball holds for him next. All right, family. Look, 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 look. Had to interrupt the episode just for a minute. I want to make sure that you're tapped in to where you're not missing any of the episodes. And how you can do that, all you have to do is just hit that subscribe button. Okay? Boom! And you want to hit that button to make sure you get our content that releasing every single Monday for Speak Your Success that's geared to our entrepreneurs and our business owners. And then we also have the content to where we're giving you for our student athletes. And that's on Beyond the Ball. OK, so look, just go ahead, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any content. Get back to the episode. Man, Justin. OK, so I, I know you recently got your MBA in May. Kudos to you. I want to give you your flowers because uh, I started a master's program. That master's program is still unfinished. Okay. So <laughs> kudos to you uh, for, for getting that done. Uh, but what would you say are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned in the first few months after grad school and how have those experiences influenced your career choices and long-term goals? I would say this. And I loved my time within the Auburn um, Business School, getting my MBA. So I actually got it in December. Um, mm -hmm. So I did a different type of program in the spring, really just to stay eligible, full transparency. It wasn't nothing. But I tell my friends this who were in my MBA program, we can all attest to this. The MBA program was definitely beneficial. It was definitely um, something that we had to work towards. It wasn't easy. Um, but boy, it's a piece of paper. Like that mm. piece of paper is not going to help you if you don't go out there and work for it. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, it's funny because every time we'd have workshops, career fairs or different types of um, our administration trying to connect us to businesses, they all knew what I was trying to do. And it had nothing to do with NBA. It was all sports broadcasting, journalism. And they'd be like, you know, Justin, we want to help you. But you know, that's not really our field. And it seems like you've got it. If there's any way we can help, we'll try. But like, you know, full transparency. And I was like, you know, that's that's fine. And so for me, it was just the fact of like, I was doing my MBA. I was succeeding. Like I had great grades, but that wasn't my focus at all. I knew down the road I may use this with some entrepreneurial pursuits, but everything that I was trying to work was like my job shadowing was my classroom. Me doing my podcast, that's my classroom. Me reaching out to people in the industry, having these phone calls, telling people I'm interested in this type of career field. What advice do you have? How can I get plugged in? Different things like that. Yeah. That was my, that's the best real experience that I could have gotten. Me joining Eagle Eye TV, our student um, run sports show on campus. That was way more impactful and beneficial to me um, than my MBA was with all due respect mm -hmm. at the time, because my, my MBA is great. It's a blessing that everybody gets to um, be able to say that I got two degrees for free. That's a great blessing. But for the career field that I wanted to go into, it was the things I was doing outside of the classroom that really helped and sparked those things. And so, um, for me, like even with the TNT, like that opportunity I got had nothing to do with the MBA, you know, that had something to do with, um, I spoke at the FCA, the lady that ran the FCA had a, she coached a, a lady that worked at TNT. We had a normal phone call. Two hours later after the phone call, she sent me the opportunity, told me to apply. I applied, wow. went through interview process, got TNT's final four opportunity. That, me being it, alongside of them, showing what I could do a little bit, that gave me um, the opportunity with the summer league. And they told me, you're the first person to ever turn that um, fellowship into a real job at the time, contracted job. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it was just about taking advantage of the opportunities I'm getting. I always tell people, man, I'm, I'm here. I'm only a call away. I'm like Deion Sanders. You know where to find me. I just need an opportunity. And when I have my opportunity, I'm going to maximize it. You know, I know there's people, I always say, I'm no expert at this game right now, but I know what I bring to the table and I'm going to give you my best. 
I've always said, I'm not the best. I'm not saying I'm the best, but ain't nobody doing it like me. That's all I'm going to say. Humbly. I feel like I'm unique to myself. I'm not saying I'm the best. All I'm saying is there's not nobody doing like me. I pride myself to be different and to show my own personality, own perspective. Um, so in short, to answer your question, I feel like those things that I've done have been stepping stones along my way. I picked these things up, continue to learn, continue to drive. But the NBA is great. I'm going to use it one day. But as far as this career goes, the stuff I learned outside the classroom is what helped drive um, your boy into this position, with God's help, of course. Most definitely. Speak on it. Speak on it. Say, Justin, yeah. man. I, I would even venture as far to, to, to say that you, you have a master's in, in connecting because you, based on, based on how me and you connected, which I honestly don't remember how we connected, but I mean, we- I don't remember either, bro. That's what I'm saying. I have no idea how we connected, but we continued to stay connected. And every once in a while, I know you'll give me a call. I'll shoot you a text and, you know, we'll chop it up about whatever, podcasting or whatever it might be. But I've, I've seen you strategically network vertically and horizontally, and, it, and you've been getting indoors. And I'm encouraged by your journey, man. Just keep on going, bro. Like you're, you're, you're like the dude with that pick that's like three feet away from gold. Like you right mm -hmm. that you're right there, bro. You're right there. So just, just keep, it. keep, it, keep yeah. it going, man. Don't stop. That, that kind of reminds me of a thing I saw. Um, and I, I'm not going to lie, like, I beg on being full transparent. I was kind of getting discouraged like a couple of days ago. Like, dang, like I did, I'm not hearing back about these opportunities. Like, what am I going to do next? Da, 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 da. And then I saw some on TikTok and it was like, it had been Michael B. Jordan talking, but it was like, people give up right before the breakthrough, like right before they break through. And I was like, okay, let me just not give up um, of what my dreams are, what my goals are. And that'll that'll suit me well. And then you talked about the connections. My friend Peyton Ringer, shout out to him. He told me this when I was at Sanford, and I never got it. He said, "It's not about the grades you make; it's about the hands you shake." And I've never forgotten that since. I'll take it. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll yeah. take it, man. I'll take it. So now, just just looking, just look looking ahead, right? With, with the experiences that you've had across multiple networks and platforms, and and you're growing your presence and podcasting. What, what are your future aspirations in the industry and what steps are you taking to build on your current success as, as you continue to evolve your on-air talent and as a podcast host? I think for me is listing out my goals, what I want to achieve and figuring out how I can achieve those. When I was at Sanford, we did a thing at track where our coach would have us write our goals, but the most important things were the input goals. So it was output like I want to be a national champion. But the most important thing is with the input goal. So what am I going to do to, in order to do that, like reach that goal? And so for me, like everybody knows, I want to be signed to a network and I want to be like long-term contract deal. So for me, it's about, okay, right now people may say I have lack of experience, things like that. Let me build my experience. Let me create my demand so high. Let me generate this social media and use it to my advantage. So like with the Saturdays was stuck, I want people to where they're expecting me. They're looking forward to me being on their campus. They're looking forward to um, the questions I bring. I want to be able to distribute out a lot of content at a high volume and at a high quality. I think that's why Saturday, not Saturday, so that's why I stuck in my thoughts had been so um, spaced out because I started focusing on the quality more than I did the quantity because that could help me down the road. <clears throat> but for me, man, my goals are the same. Right now, you may have to do different things to... <laughs> pay those bills but i'm still going to be you know focusing on those goals i am calling a game uh sanford versus vmi that's october the 5th so i'm going to be looking forward to that shout out to big sanford for giving me an opportunity there um so really just taking the opportunities i have um i'm early in the game 24 yeah. um uh, recently 24 so um i'm early in the, in this thing so i'm just going to keep continuing to pushing like i said about the rebrand on the podcast line out these guests and try to knock them out <clears throat> and sometimes like you may have to do stuff along the way i've seen a lot of people work another job and then use that to help um fund and boost whatever dreams and goals they have um for me i've had people throw the idea out 
and throw the idea down about um, local TV. And so mm -hmm. just kind of balancing that of what I want to do um, is that's going to be something that's going to be beneficial to me down the line or something that's in a way going to slow me down. You look at like Pat McAfee, he built his own empire to where his demand was super high. Cam Newton, like he's, he's really close on the, them two are close on the brink of if they want it being on a network, you know? So, um, for me, I'm just going to continue to build my empire. Um, right now that can come in various forms. So, you know, I me, mean, I'm goal oriented driven and I'm just focusing on, you know, trusting God along the way, not getting discouraged. And then whoever's taking that chance on me, I appreciate it. I had a, uh, producer, um, uh, from, I'm not gonna name no names, but I had a producer from a major network reach out to me recently and was like, you know, they're trying to figure out ways to to plug me in, you know, and continue to do what I'm doing. So to me, that's kind of motivating because I'm like, okay, um, I'm not there. They don't see me as there now because everybody's got an option. You've got an option. I don't care what nobody says. If you want to get something done, you can get it done. So for me, it's about, okay, let me make my demand so high to where it's not a, hey, man, we're trying to figure something out. It's, hey, man, we need you now. Are you available? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to continue to drive to do and then stay humble with it. Um, there's a lot of things that I can let piss me off and this and that, but I'm just going to stay focused on the main goal and remember the reason I got into it. And that's just to highlight the athletes the best way I can, because I know what it's like to be a high level athlete and have fun talking about some sports. So love it, man. Real deal, man. Real deal. Yeah. I mean, we've heard we, we, we've heard a lot of uh, gems from you. We've heard, heard a lot of game. Uh, man, now I want I want to give you the opportunity, uh, Justin, to just shine the spotlight on uh, somebody else. This is our winner circle of the week, and this is when you get the opportunity to shine the spotlight on somebody who you've seen, who's been putting in work, and you feel they haven't received the appreciation or the just due as of yet. Who would that person or persons be for you? That they haven't. Hmm. Man, it's a lot of people. Let me throw it. Let me throw it. Cause he's gonna be, he's next up to my boy Vince Wolfram. My boy puts in a lot of work. He's a uh, now a senior at Auburn. Okay. He's actually the one who told me about Eagle Eye TV here. He interviewed me because I was an athlete. Um, but shout out to Vince. I think Vince is on the cusp of really doing big things. Um, he's he's he works hard, man. He's driven. Um, I always get on him because you talk about I'm the the master of the connections. I always get on a little bit. I was like, you got to put yourself out there as far as those connects. But <clears throat> as far as a guy who's going to put in that work, going to put in his dues and has those dreams and goals, that's him, man. And I always say, like, his talent's up there. Um, and people are starting to realize it now. Uh, he's just one person that comes to mind off the top of my head because we just talked the other day. But he's a grinder, man. Um, when he talks about this this industry specifically he's he's on his way so shout out to vince there's a lot of people i could put in that winter circle though i got you i got you. shout out to big vince and then what like is his you, you have his instagram handle or the twitter so we can we can tag him make sure he, he gets the love i think all the stuff is vince wolfram um he's got his own podcast invincible i don't i don't know how often he's doing it he got invincible um okay. he's like the creative director He's going to be an anchor again for mm. Eagle Eye TV. He worked at a, a news station this summer in Louisville, Kentucky, I mm. believe. Mm. Um, he's on him and one of my best friends, Dylan Carr, will have a like a joint podcast. It's similar to the big podcast that Shaq and uh, Adam Lefko has. It's mm. called Big Talk. So they got their podcast. Shout out to them. Uh, mm. But no, Vince is a grinder, man. And uh, whoever gets him is going to be lucky to have him. That's awesome, man. I love, love to hear it. Love to hear it. We're about to get ready to wrap, but this is the last question I got to ask you because this is our Dear Student Athlete segment. And this is the mm -hmm. segment where I like to just create so that the student athletes out there, they get an opportunity to hear some game, hear just, you know, what's one tip that, that you would share with a, with a current student athlete that, that they can, you know, they can take, they can apply right now to their life to where, you know, hopefully they can be in a position like you or, you know, you know, just be able to achieve some level of success. So for the Dear Student Athlete segment, Justin, what, what's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? You're never too cool for school. You're never too cool. You have a lot of athletes that I've seen that 
people feel like they can't do something or don't want to get involved in something because they have this persona of I have to keep this rep. Dude, I was I was a high level track and field athlete. I was a number one recruit in the transfer portal when I transferred to Auburn. I've been third in the country. I've been sixth in the country. I've been to Olympic trials. I've set school and conference records. But at the same time, I got involved in stuff on campus and outside of my sport. Get involved. You never know the things that will come from it. Because I tell this to everybody, no matter who you are, the ball is going to stop. You're not going to be able to run, throw, jump at some point within that university, that system. Like even LeBron James, he's figuring out now, hey, I'm about to be life after basketball. I've done this a long time, but it's going to be life after basketball. So you're never too, never too cool to get involved. So I would definitely say my advice to the young ballers out there, man, get involved. Like have fun. You're not, you're not too cool, man. And then you'll realize you'll want those opportunities and stuff back when people ain't really – on your jock like that because you're not suiting up for that school. So hmm. get involved. That's a word. Speak on it. Speak on it. That's a word. That's a word. Justin, please let the people uh, know where they can find you, follow you, and connect with you. Hey, man, you guys can just search my name, Justin Stuckey. I think it's pretty um, consistent across all my social media platforms. Just my name. Y'all give me a shout out. Follow Stuck in My Thoughts podcast on Instagram on Twitter, on TikTok. That's just stuck in my thoughts or stuck in my thoughts pod. Um, let's see what else. Stay tuned for Saturdays with Stuck. If you don't know what that is, you will soon. We got a lot on the horizon. Next week, we drop it. Next week, we going with it. So you guys stay tuned for that. And that's going to be on my personal pages. So yeah. Sounds good, man. Thanks again for, for gracing the Beyond the Ball stage and man we, we look forward to seeing saturdays with stud oh yeah man i appreciate you uh giving me the opportunity um uh, scout right here is, is the man we met at sanford one time i do remember oh, that that's where it was that's, yeah i had known you a little bit we met in person at sanford u that is where it was because i was on campus trying to figure out how i can speak to the student mm -hmm. athletes and i and you were you were just coming off the track yeah yep yeah, yep yeah. And you had them cool shades on. Yeah, man. I think those are the yeah. pit vibrators at the time. I'm with Oakley. So, Oakley, if you see this, I need some more shades now. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> All right, man. We we're getting deal. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get, get ready to get out of here. Oh, man. Justin, thanks again. To all the ballers out there. <laughs> to all the ballers out there. Y'all, you really have to know, understand what Justin said. And please apply this information because this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree. Beyond the Ball. Man.